Let us pray. Lord, may the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, especially today as we reflect on your word. Sometimes it is easier to stay in bondage in the Egypt you know than to believe in the promise of a Canaan you cannot see. This is certainly how I felt on Friday when I was informed of the sad news of a friend who took his life in the early hours of Friday morning at his family home. Getting up at 2 a.m. to commit suicide with your children and wife sleeping in their beds is the place you end up when things fall apart. When your dreams die, your career collapses, or your marriage ends. It is the underworld of fairy tale and myth, hope abandoned. Somehow the things some of us once dreamed of has been smothered by the night of disappointment. Whether you are a John, Jacob, or Moses, the journey into the wilderness of life is the dark night of the soul. A divorce, suicide, the death of a child, the loss of a job, or failure of a business. These are deeply human and universal experiences that meet us all on the journey of life. It is the terminal sickness of a child or the despair and horror you feel when you have been profoundly betrayed. It is where we are when we don't know where we are or what we are doing. In short, those situations when we read about the promises of God but don't experience them. When hope is lost and the promise of the kingdom seems futile. It is in times like these when the ocean of grief is bottomless and family and friends are few. To those who have felt the pain of death, you will know that grief is a desert that must be crossed by foot. Yet the depths of pain and struggles we all wrestle with are sometimes disguised as an adversary, a tragedy, or a disaster sent to purify, cleanse, and heal. At times the human experience can make us feel divine or damned, blessed or cursed, as we navigate the two mirrors of life bringing either pleasure or shame to those who have fallen in search of redemption. And yet that is where redemption is truly found, as Christ offers us the solution in Matthew 4, where he is led into the wilderness to be tested. And let me suggest, in testament to the exactitude of that story, 40 nights and 40 days starving alone in the wilderness might take you exactly to a place of desperation and destitution. Forty days is deeply symbolic. It echoes the forty years the Israelites spent wandering in the desert after, after escaping the tyranny of Pharaoh and Egypt. Forty days is a long time in the underworld of dark assumptions, confusion and fear. It is long enough to journey to the very center of hell itself. But as we read in the Gospel today, the voice of hope is calling to you from the wilderness, telling you the season is changing, that darkness and death in your life will initiate the coming of light and truth. Today's readings tell us to see beyond what our eyes can see, beyond the pain we sometimes hold so tightly onto. It is the call to run toward the things we fear rather than away from it. It is the call of the one who made us to confront the underworld of despair where the dragon and the gold it guards eternally coexist. 
It is the call to forgive the unforgiven in our lives. It is a call to heal. In those moments, God is saying, still believe. Still believe in what I told you. See beyond your eyes. Continue to believe in the dreams you once had. God is saying that your mountains will be made low and your valleys will be raised up. That those things that once bound you and continue to follow you into the Red Sea of your experiences will not emerge with you. God is saying that if you persevere, you will emerge cleansed, refined, and healed. Sadly, the real tragedy of our lives is not death itself, but rather the tragedy of dying without ever knowing why you live. It is having died without ever knowing life. The real tragedy is the acceptance of waking up every morning, getting into the same car, getting stuck in the same traffic, going to work at the same place you hate, with people you can't stand, to get paid far less than you are worth. Too many of us go through this endless cycle of ever knowing our purpose on this earth. There is purpose to your life. It is calling from within you. And that is more than the bills you get up each day to pay. And today the message is that the winter periods of your life are there because God is working within your spirit to develop the call and purpose he has placed within you. John's message of the kingdom is this. Now is the accepted time. Today, if you will hear his voice. It is to live a life of purpose for which you were born. A life of purpose can be seen when a man at 33 years old, while hanging on a cross, can say, I have finished the work that thou hast gavest me to do. There are some things God takes you through. The Red Sea experiences of life just to destroy what is chasing you. No matter where you are in life's journey, God can still find you. There is no retreat in this life. From the crosses we must bear. And in some ways, I am reminded of the movie The Lord of the Rings where Frodo represents the every, every man of daily life. He represents each of us struggling to destroy our sinful nature, temptations or struggles we endure, represented by the one ring we must all carry. It is the eternal inner battle between order and chaos that dwells within us. Order is the shire of Tolkien's hobbits, peaceful, productive, and safely habitable, even by the naive. Chaos is the underworld kingdom of dwarves, usurped by Smog, the treasure hoarding serpent. Chaos is the deep ocean bottom to which Pinocchio voids to rescue his father from Monstro, whale and fire-breathing dragon. That journey into darkness and rescue is the most difficult thing a puppet must do if he wants to become real. If he wants to extract himself from the temptations of deceit and victimization, if he wants to take his place as a genuine human being. Maybe this is the meaning we must all pursue. If we are to find the redemption and forgiveness we seek, which is to pick up the cross of your tragedy and betrayal, accept its terrible weight, Waste it onto your shoulders and struggle impossibly upward toward the kingdom on the hill. I tell you today, there is a voice. A voice is calling from inside your wilderness, asking you today to treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping. And telling you today that inside your every wound, there too, lies the seeds for its cure.